Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the planning and zoning meeting tonight, February the 4th, 2016. We'll open up our agenda tonight with our first public hearing and our only public hearing, and that's section 405.285, planned unit development. Mr. Hamp, do you want to bring us up to date on that? Please. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. This is a uh, proposed tax amendment to section 405.285 plan unit developments, ADM-80. I'd like to ask to make part of the public hearing record, the municipal code by reference, the public hearing notice, and my planning and zoning report. Thank you. Is there anyone here tonight to speak? In favor or against the section 405.285 plan unit development? Hearing none, we'll close our public hearing for this evening and open up our regular meeting. First order of business will be our minutes from the January 7th, Accept the minutes as uh, presented here. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Deek, second by Mrs. Scott to accept the minutes as presented. Any other questions or comments? Roll call vote. Mr. Costello is absent. Mr. Deech? Yes. Mr. Cullum is absent. Mrs. Scott? Yes. Mr. Barton? Yes. Mr. Schwab? Yes. Mr. Durbin? Yes. Mr. Gerloff? Yes. Mrs. Blondin? Yes. Motion passes 7 0 with two absent and still one vacancy on the board. Next order of business will be section 405.285 plan unit development text amendment that was presented to us in the public hearing. Open up the floor for comments. I brought this back to you at the request of the city attorney <coughs> regarding our existing code for the plan unit developments. Um, <coughs> he just recommended that we let the PNZ Commission and the <coughs> Board of Aldermen review it and make sure that it's whether or not it needs tweak to meet the city's current needs. <coughs> In your packet I tried to break down some of the main topics and don't necessarily have to go up through them in the order I have them presented but uh, to make it easier for me keeping notes and keeping track of things I'd appreciate if we can try to at least hit them one topic at a time and I'm confident that it's going to take more than one meeting to to work through this but I appreciate your guys patience and looking at this and trying to make sure uh, if you feel there's no need to revise it that's fine but if you feel we do these are some of the main topics that uh, we'd like to discuss so you you included an example of a code from our surrounding city is I mean was there worded in there that he thought needed to be in ours or no I just I just been trying to put this together from scratch I didn't know if it'd be helpful to you guys or not I've got examples of code for everything on it but I didn't want to give you 20 pages of other cities codes so I just put a couple lines out of some of the things like in the first little group uh, if it's helpful to you guys fine I'll include more in the next meetings if it's a distraction I'll definitely not I just didn't know where to start oh I didn't basically. know if that was something that you were proposing we do that in lieu of what we had but no. that's just just as of something today, for us to look at something to consider okay. or to get the topic going as of today Chris has not recommended anything specific except that we look at the code and dis discuss if we feel it meets our current needs. And has anybody come in with a planned unit development? Do we have any of those in the city? The fairgrounds villas, um, they were in and then it was tabled in July. They'll, they'll be back on the next month's meeting. <coughs> um, so they would be going under what the existing code is since they had already started the process. There's discussion of a couple 
other projects that may come into the city, but as of today, there's no uh, application submitted. And this is also um, after they made the section for um, on the individual lot multifamily units when they came up with that ordinance for how to resolve some of the issues in these lots that were illegally subdivided. So we, he's, he's trying to be proactive and prevent problems and just see if there's anything we want to change while we have the opportunity before hopefully the growth picks up and we have more developments coming through. Okay, but you want to just start at the top and tackle We can start anywhere. My only my only request was if we just do one at a time so I can try to keep up with my notes and make sure that what what your comments or recommendations are I make sure I get down properly. I do have one concern and I'm not sure this is the time to voice it, but I guess I would not like to see a lot of these developments concentrated in one area. Um, I think to have a large number of families, residents, occupants, whatever term you want to use, all together in several of these developments in the same area maybe is not in the best long-term interest of the city okay and I am not sure how you handle that other than maybe on an individual basis but I think we need to be aware that <coughs> these developments do not always stay in the hands of people who will um, take care of them in the way that is described at the time they were approved and built. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I think that would be very easy to include like in number, number four as a site specific clause. You know, if you come up with some, some type of code related to how many of these developments or how much density in, in a certain area. Um, like I say, we're starting from scratch, so there's going to be a lot of you guys give me information. I can review it with Chris, bring it back. That's why I'm confident. That, you know, it's not going to be not going to be done with this tonight. But I, I mean, I think the, <coughs> and maybe I'm wrong, but I think a plan unit development has a whole lot more uses than just the one that you mentioned earlier for the senior housing, where it's all uh, residential and maybe high density I mean I I think the idea is that you could and and correct me if I'm wrong but you could take an area of say downtown maybe and say we want to make this a planned unit development we're going to do some commercial on the bottom with apartments on the top and we're going to do this but it's just a unique use and there should be like a mix of commercial and I mean you can mix the two together because you're doing something specific and I well there's a number of planned unit developments along in St. Charles where the front may be um, I think Wing Haven may have been one of them where you have commercial on the front multifamily and then it goes into single family so you're the zoning you're stepping back for density so that there's buffers between each one of them so a planned unit that's really just a multifamily development on a tract of land it really doesn't Plain unit development usually encompasses commercial, multi and single family developments, not just multi family developments. So it, it could it could actually uh, create a neighborhood, so to speak, Correct. where there's some like a maybe a small grocery store or some of those services. I mean, it, it's bigger than I think it's bigger than just this development. Why they came in that way as opposed to under a, a apartment complex or is there their zoning for just multifamily? I don't know why they came in under a PUD as opposed to just un under multifamily. But um, I think the scope, the idea is for the scope to be bigger to allow some f 
flexibility. Correct. I think that's when the Bruni property down there, I think that's the way that was initially thought about doing was commercial, high density, single family homes at the rear when that first started, whole, that whole idea started. If I'm not mistaken. Was that brought in as a pod? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I don't think so either. Actually, that's been there. That wasn't that piece of property was in the city, but I don't think they ever came in to to do it that way. They just kind of, they divided it. It's big enough they could subdivide and do different things in different areas. There needs to be some more meat into, when you get into the planning unit developments to where you have buffer areas such as berms, trees, screening, so that you don't have a multifamily and you look out the back and here's the dumpsters and the rooftop units there's buffer areas in between them. So what what was the thinking behind the that apartment area coming in as a planned unit development since it's not a mixed use it's it's a single use. Why the applicant Why did why did they go that way? Yeah, I guess that's the question. I, I don't have that answer. <laughs> The one thing that I saw reading through here was that the the ownership requirements didn't seem to be very clearly differentiated. And I would, it said that one place it said, well, it has to be one owner. And then it said, or it can be under a management team. All right, one management. And then it said, if it's individually owned, you have to do this. So it was like, what are the parameters there? So, <coughs> I do not have any specific anywhere in anything that I do. <coughs> no, I'm saying in our current ordinance. Looking at our current ordinance. Mm -hmm. And that's probably part of the reason why we're looking at this because there's sections of it that's confusing and we're not 100% sure if it's what we really want moving forward. <coughs> But I think it should be taken out of the codes as far as a plan unit development and address it on a, if someone comes in with a large development, you know, with mixed use, that they could, there would be an option for them to submit for that. But for what the city's doing right now, you have single family, multifamily, or commercial come in under one of those, those uh, options and review it on a case by case basis. Well, the other, the other option would be to use the planned unit development only if it's a mixed use. Correct. So leave it in the ordinance, but tweak it so that if you're just bringing in uh, condos or duplexes and the whole thing is going to be that, that it's not a planned unit development a, because there's no mixed use. Yeah, then it's just a multifamily use. Otherwise, they're just muddying the waters. Yeah. I haven't worked with a plan unit development in a lot of years. Well, I guess the first question is, do you guys feel we need to revise our code or not? I really don't think we should, you know, more, dic more using, because uh, no one's coming in to do that type of development. You know, those apartments review it just as a multifamily does it meet the guidelines there? Setbacks, buffers, whatever the case may be, and review them in that order. But if you're going, I, I think if you're going to leave it in, you need to tweak it some, because I think you need to take out the, if we're coming in as a single use, we're gonna use this for a single use. If you're gonna take it out altogether, then you don't have to tweak it. True. <laughs> I don't know if that's used a lot in other municipalities such as St. Charles, <coughs> uh, Wentzville. I don't know if that's used that much. Well, maybe that's, since he's not really expecting this to be resolved tonight, maybe that's a question we need an answer to. In the, in the, in the areas that have a lot of building going on, is this something that's commonly Correct. 
used. And what are their guidelines for a BED? Uh, I know I've got Winsville's information. I should have brought my list with me. I got from 13 different cities, 12 or 13 different cities is where I got their code from. And Winsville was one of them. I mean, we don't want to go a whole lot further east because you get in, we're not a Chesterfield or a Wildwood or down in the country, we're warranted. <laughs> you said you do have Winsville's? Yeah. yeah. I would say we'd start, let's look at that and tweak it from there. I think it would be easier to tweak something that's already been established and used and went trying to because none of us are uh, versed enough to make, hey, this is the best way to do it. Let's, let's see what they've done in other cities and start with one of theirs. And then decide, yeah, we need to do this or no. Or yeah. so, so do you want me to provide you with the code from all the cities that I've researched? Not, not all of no. them. Not all of them. I would say you know, let's use Winsville. That's our closest. Does Wright City have one for? Yes. I would say Winsville and Wright City. Look at those two. Yeah. And if you have time to maybe look through the others and see if there's anything that's kind of common or. Every one of them's different. They're all different. I've read yeah. every okay. page. <laughs> 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 then we'll just look at Winsville and Wright yeah. City. <laughs> Otherwise, we could be here and years from now going, yeah. yeah, what are we going to do? If we hold on for one second, I'll run down and grab my folder and give you the exact cities that I looked at. Okay. Give me a minute wait. or two to run up the steps. Fred, you want to entertain him for a minute? <laughs> no, it's not my turn. <laughs> <laughs> He's not on the agenda. We can put. <laughs> you want to join in with the rest of the audience? And <laughs> anybody so got any cards at deck cards? Okay. <laughs> so this page here, that he's got twenty different things mm -hmm. for discussion topics. That would be. That would be if we're going to start from scratch. Well, even if we're going to use like Winsfields, we want to make sure all those things are addressed, or we don't want to use Winsfields. So if we want to tweak Winsfields or Wright Cities, we would need to make sure those 20 items are addressed. And I think that's something that let everybody have a chance to read those and then look at it again next month. Right. Because we're not going to we're not going to solve this this puzzle tonight. No. Well, my point is, though, is is ours that bad? Is that what they're trying to, or they just want us to look at it to? If this is the, since we're doing this, going through our code, we're just taking this opportunity to take a look at it and tweak it's it when we're see. Yeah. I think that's more of the purpose is to be proactive. I do think there's some, like I said, the ownership thing seemed a little confusing when I read through it. <laughs> So it was late at night and I thought, maybe I'm just tired. <laughs> <laughs> I read it in the uh, afternoon and it was still confusing. <laughs> I haven't had a chance to read any of it, so. What cities do you have, Jack? As soon as I catch my breath. Um, <laughs> Chesterfield, Columbia, Cottleville, Darting Prairie, Lake St. Louis, O'Fallon, St. Peter's, Troy, Washington, Winsville and Wright City. I'd be curious to see Troy's. They're, yeah. They've got a lot of multifamily going in. They've got a Troy, lot of Winsville, Wright Wall City. Wall. Mm -hmm. That's that's plenty, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the others were all farther Large east. Large cities and, and yeah. <coughs> I can get these emailed to you first thing in the morning. Okay. Okay. Do you want to have a work session prior to the next P and Z meeting, or just discuss it at the next P and Z meeting? Is the next P and Z meeting going to be busy? So far on it, we will have fairground villas and a revision to sign code. I would say it would e be easier to have a work night where we're sitting around the table versus sitting in front of all of the audience and we can discuss it. I think that would be that. an easier. Can we agree on a date? Yeah. <laughs> 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 
because I I've got all the code so I can get it to you in the morning so however long you guys think you want to review it before we get together there's a week I'm available eight to five every day or an evening let me know throw out a date or two what's your first choice John I, you know I'm retired I'm old and I'm crotchety so <laughs> me too <laughs> I'm not retired <laughs> I got two out of three <laughs> <laughs> so you know I, unless something dynamic comes up you know I'm, I'm available almost any time and I would say don't work around me because I'm gone two of the next four weeks. So. Well, I think you need to be <laughs> in on it. Well, well you're not going. From, I'll be. I'm leaving on the 17th and coming back on the first. Mm. Then the third is planning and zoning meeting. Yeah. But why don't we shoot for a week from tonight? Will next Thursday work, the 11th? That's a school board meeting. That's a school board meeting. Oh. The 10th? I can do the 10th. Which, what day is the 10th on? Wednesday. Wednesday, next Wednesday. Wednesday. Oh, I can't do Wednesday, Tom. You have a problem on Wednesday? You're used to that, yeah. Randy. <laughs> it's Ash Wednesday, actually. Oh, it's Ash Wednesday? Yeah. I already volunteered to cook some pancakes. Say we got pancake dinner that night. Yeah, that's pancake dinner. How about Monday, Monday the fifteenth? Yeah, Mondays are good for that's me. That's a holiday. What kind of holiday is that? President's Day. Oh, oh. okay. <laughs> I don't get off that day. <laughs> um, yeah. Me neither. But the city's probably is the city off? No. No. <laughs> You're not off for President's Day? No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'll work on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll talk to <laughs> President Washington and President Lincoln. <laughs> 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 or John Marshall, who proposed that um, to Congress. Uh, or John Barry, who was there when they did That's it. right. That too. I don't have to be there. <laughs> Just <laughs> Let's shoot for uh, the 15th. Uh, well, let's... What time are we going to do it? What time works for everybody? I'm 8 to 5, I'm here for sure. Or any time after that, let me know. We could go earlier. Yeah, 5.15. 5 5.30, 6 o'clock, something like that. Sure. 5.30, are we looking at the 15th? Mm -hmm. 5.30 on the 15th. What day is the 15th? It's on Monday. Monday, that's fine. Well, I was thinking even next Tuesday, though, before the 9th. I'm busy uh, on Tuesdays, but... Uh, Tuesdays, okay. Yeah, Mondays and Thursdays are good for me. Yeah, right, are good on Monday. You can make it, make it. If you can't, you can't. Monday the 15th. the eighth or Monday the fifteenth. Fifteenth. Fifteenth at okay. five thirty, right? Yep. Brandy, will you send us a reminder? I sure will. Some of us who are old, crotchety, and cantankerous also <laughs> have memory problems. And we yes, because I I will have to verify that no one's using the chambers too. I don't. Off the top of my head, I don't know of a meeting, but yeah, I'll need to verify that. I'll be coming back from Chicago that day, but I'm confident you guys can handle it without me, maybe. <laughs> We can, say we can do a cell phone. We can do a conference <laughs> call. Yeah, yeah. 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 But I, I may be back. Just it okay. depends on how good my son plays hockey. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we're tabling this till next <coughs> okay. PNZ meeting, so we have time to yeah, we'll review check. them three city codes. Three examples. Entertain a motion to table that. So Make moved. A motion. I'll second. Motion by Mr. Deach, second by Mr. Gerloff to uh, table the discussion on PUDs until a work session. All in favor? Oh, I guess we'll take a roll call vote. Sorry. Mrs. Scott? Yes. Mr. Barton? Yes. Mr. Schwab? Yes. Mr. Durbin? Yes. Mr. Gerloff? Yes. Mrs. Blondin? Yes. Mr. Deach. Yes. Motion passes 7 to 0 with 2 absent. Next order of business will be... Uh, oh, go ahead. Jack, when you send us those copies, if there's something in one of those cities uh, 
list of whatever. If there's something in particular that you really want to call to our attention because either you think it's a, a good idea or that it's a terrible idea, will you make a note of that or maybe highlight it in some way or whatever, if you can? And there may not be anything that... Yeah. So. Well, and it's, that'll be good yeah. for the workshop because we can discuss, you know, if he sees It might be best just to send it to you mm -hmm. and then Read let it, you guys and decide and then okay. we've got different opinions of what's good and what's bad and get a happy medium. Yeah, we'll all agree. <laughs> <laughs> Next order business discussion regarding trailer mobile homes and within the city limits continued from our last meeting. This was information that uh, Teresa asked first for us to research and I've got answers to a couple of your specific questions and I have a list of some surrounding cities on who has age restrictions and their occupancy permits. Um, the first question was uh, one of the commissioners thought there was a moratorium regarding trailers. I've looked and, and the city clerk has looked and we can find no record of any moratorium regarding trailers or motorhomes. Uh, we've also looked, myself, Melody, and uh, we consulted with City Attorney Greville and we can find no ordinances or municipal code that would prevent a trailer, placement of a trailer, mobile home, on any lot within the city limits that permits a residential single family dwelling as long as the trailer mobile home meets the minimum or square foot requirements and it meets the minimum setback requirements. Now there are subdivisions that have their own specific covenants and restrictions that may prevent that, but the city does not govern subdivision restrictions. But as far as a, <coughs> oh, go ahead. I was just going on to the list of. <coughs> then let me the ones comment on that. If a subdivision <coughs> has a restriction then it's up to the subdivision to enforce that. If the homeowner association. The homeowners yeah, association. So if you have a subdivision with no homeowners association, there's really no enforcement of that rule. Well, the, if there's no association, they probably would not have that rule. Well, it might be that mm -hmm. the homeowners association has ceased to exist in a particular subdivision. Uh, the city's not responsible to that. Main, make sure that the individual subdivisions. Well, I think that's my point. The city's not responsible for that. Is there an example of a subdivision in the city limits that allows mobiles besides a trailer park that already exists? Just, just I'm curious. not aware of it. Okay. Well, I'm th I'm thinking like the older sections of town, like uh, Steinhagen and Cherry, and I I don't know if they do or don't have regulations or but even if they did there's no homeowners association so and the subdivision I live in doesn't have a homeowners association so then technically if someone submitted an application for a trailer mm -hmm. within that subdivision and it meets the setback requirements and the minimum square footage I could not deny their building permit and this would not even have to be on a foundation there's nothing that says the trailer has to be on the foundation. It would have to be secured safety-wise, either hurricane straps or whatever, but there's nothing that requires a trailer to be set on a permanent foundation. No, are we talking trailers or modular homes? Trailers. I mean, the pull it in with a truck and Art. Move, move into it. I think that that's something that we need to address. I think there should be something in that no other than designated trailer parks, which, what are there in Warrington? Three? There's two. There's Paddock and then the one across from the radio, radio station. So I don't know where the other one is. is there there, one? There, well, there's some out on uh, Service Road, but is that? That's, that's not right city city. limits of That's outside of the city limits. I think it's actually the right city. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The address Probably. is right city, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I think yes. that. Oh, I agree. That's kind of scary. And yeah. Doug, Doug out of our cities. Dogwood? Oh, the, that, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just I was thinking anyway. that dogwood. Yeah. yeah. I think you that's heard. one thing that we I think need that to just address. needs to be written in the ordinance that no trailers are allowed unless they're in uh, 
a designated trailer park. And I thought that was in the ordinance, so I'm surprised that it's not. But yeah, I'd, I'd like to see us look at that. And then grandfather, any of them, there's one on Oak Street, I think. There's quite still, a few here and there in town. There's yeah, there's a few that those are grandfathered in, they can stay, but if those are pulled out or fall down or blow away, no new ones can be moved into that location. And I was under the false assumption that that was what what we were dealing with <coughs> now, is that it, if something happened to it, you know, so much, just like a dilapidated house, if it was so much re behind, uh, beyond repair, then you had to just right. go to, to a conforming use. So I'd like to see that looked at, definitely. I can consult with City Attorney Greville and see if that's something that would be in Section 400, which would require a public hearing, or if it would be something in Section 500 building section, which would not require public hearing. I'll get that information back to you at the next meeting and see how we would move forward. Okay. Another thing that I noticed looking through there is that there's immobilized mobile homes and mobile homes and the immobilized mobile homes don't have any type of a date on them but in the mobile home section it does refer to 1976 and it's my understanding that's when the federal government stepped in and made them get meet certain criteria and they started stamping the ID plates or then number plates so you would know when it was manufactured. But that's ref it's referenced on mobile homes, but it's not referenced on immobilized mobile homes, which would be the mm. ones that would be put on a foundation. And the regulations were also changed again in 94 to for greater wind protection. So <coughs> like I say, I can verify with Chris on what section that would be. If we're going to change any of these definitions, that's definitely Chapter 400, so that would have to have, go have a public hearing. Okay. I just think we kind of need to to look at those. And then I think we need to put a date on it that they cannot be, keep it simple, that if they're going to pull a new mobile home in and Paddock Fields or whatever the name of that other one. Sunshine. Sunrise. Um, Sunrise. Thank you. That they bring in a copy of the title and show it to the building department or someone at the city that this is eight years old and we're moving it in and get proof of that before it's moved in and set in place because then how do you get it back out? Right. So well, that was my question because I can't remember what the requirements were even when we moved ours here in 1991, 1990. There is no requirements. City so warranted as far as so the restriction on a... So basically parent. I just contacted the owners of that place down there and they said, yep, bring it on in. And I hired a company and they moved it. And I mean, I'm, I, assuming I, that's what I'm you telling you, I can't remember, <laughs> but I'm assuming, because I don't remember working with the city at all to get that done. Probably the only would be the for water and sewer connection. Right. Well, the sewer connection would And that was all done there. Yeah, they had it there. Yeah, and that doesn't... I didn't even pay it a, up I didn't garden hose. Yeah, I didn't. Most of them. Yeah. The only thing I know about down there is that the, so, something happened a little bit later that with the 100-year floodplain down there in the valley. Oh, you were down there. Is that where the, the theater is at now? Mm -hmm. so. It was a nice place, but some agency came by and said we had to. Everybody had to raise their trailers a hundred or one foot because of the hundred-year floodplain. So we just sold them. They moved ours out to some other place. And Is there restrictions in the city regarding tie-down of trailers? It would have to meet the wind wind restrictions. Yes, if it's not on a permanent foundation. You've never got into that. Is there well the, the the company that like when I moved mine the company legally, I mean that they put those hurricane because that's the first time I've ever heard that term, but it was kind of interesting. 
the hur the hurricane yeah, stripes. Yeah, calls them hurricane straps. They yeah. probably got an official name for them. But. I think that's what they <laughs> called them, though, hurricane straps, and made sure that they were tied down to a certain whatever. And if a hurricane comes through, all that's left is the four hooks in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, there are some, there are some state regulations. Apparently, we're actually having a new trailer moved into a uh, property that we own that had a fire, so we have, we're replacing it with a new one. And um, I mean, they are required to be peered. They're required to have a certain slope underneath the thing. They have to have gravel. So there, there are some state regulations. Really? I don't know that there's anything from the city, but yes, it's it's been a learning yeah. experience. I say I've never dealt with one. So I've never dealt with one before <laughs> either, but I'm doing it. I now. know who to call if I ever deal with one. Now. Call me at. Yeah, got it. <laughs> so, but um, I guess the the thing that started the whole conversation, and we found these other little issues <coughs> that need to be dealt with, is do we want to define an age of trailer that comes into the city? You know, once they're here, they're here until, you know, they if it comes there. into a trailer court, they obviously can can stay there until they're until whoever's living in it or owns it determines to get rid of it. But do there need to be any guidelines for the sake of? Um, well, there's two basically different issues. One of is quality of the trailer and and that kind of thing, and and um, the other is basically tax because a, the, a trailer depreciates so fast that when you pull a 10 year old trailer into the city you're or in into anywhere your right. you know your ability for that to pay for the services that it requires from the school the fire department the police department is is kind of negated it seems like to me most people had like a 10 year old was you know like the cutoff point it couldn't be you know you couldn't bring anything older than 10 years I remember seeing that in different places so you know you shouldn't that's pretty well there's only two of them in here at say 10 the other ones are from yeah. 76 I mean, out, out of the 16 30 years out of the 16 surrounded cities and I, and I went with cities close and then sort of in our population range where we're at or where we're going to be heading to but I found there were another three that don't allow them at all. Right. So there's three that don't allow them them at all. There's two that have ten years, and they are our very close neighbors, Truesdale and Wright City. Well, I'm saying set it up so that they're not allowed anywhere except the two trailer parks that's there. The trailer parks from now on are no longer allowed within the city limits, and that has to be newer than 10 years old. Fairly simple. Like I said, well, I'll have to verify with Chris what section yeah. of code we would put that. Because right. if it's a zoning regulation, it definitely <coughs> has to be hearing right. theoretically before we could discuss it in detail and pass anything on to the Board of Aldermen. But if you guys as the commission instruct me to get that information for you, I definitely will. Right. And then we'll have the exact answer moving forward. But you're, the main thing you want to do is put a location and an age restriction. And the no, two items you and want no additional mobile home parks allowed in the city of Warrant. We want to even, the only thing about that is there is some that's here. You don't want any uh, them to change it at all. I mean, if, if somebody wants to improve the one they have, they have an older one. You're not going to let them do that even if they can't. And might not be able to afford to build on the lot. Or then you have the problem too, the fact is, is it gonna be a buildable lot? I'd say that's a lot of it. The one that's on Oak Street that I can see that I mean that lot's probably 35, 40 foot wide. Yeah, so you gotta keep that in consideration too, that if you want somebody to upgrade their mobile to a house, you're gonna have to have some flexibility for them to uh, to, to be able to build on a lot, which brings up another. It's a whole new ball of wax. Another thing that we were talking about a few months ago about our uh, uh, changing the uh, changing the zoning for the old city lots. I know Correct. we just talked about it, but nobody actually 
We've not brought it up since then. Have to get some leniency on those lots. Yeah, those weird lots we got, in the, you know, the older off-size lots. <laughs> well, is that, it wasn't on the agenda. Can we put it on the agenda for the next meeting? What's that? It wasn't on the tonight's agenda to discuss the lots that are odd sized in the odd size, but yeah, for set, Un set unique, back yes, for that set back where the setback requirements make it very difficult to do anything. Um, can we put that because it needs to be on the <laughs> agenda to talk about it? You want. It needs to be on the agenda to talk about it. So, can we put that on next month's ad yep. agenda? And I'll just I'll verify if it needs a public hearing. Does anybody have anything else about the trailers that you? Yeah, mobile home. I want to make sure I got the three specific. You said no additional mobile home parks, no trailers older than a certain age, and what was the third one, Kevin? You that they can only go into the existing trailer parks, which kind of with the first one kind of negates the third one. So we will actually say no mobile, no mobile homes in city limits. Other than those two that you need. The allowed. I will get them specifics. May ask Chris how we need to proceed yep. with it. Well, and that and it's nothing <coughs> else that'll give us a place to start, start the up. discussion. I agree. If I get it quick enough, I'll send it with the other sections of code so at least you have his response. So we should have it by 9 30 tomorrow morning. Would that I, I am not sure right? Mr. Greville's schedule. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I get. <laughs> you can have a five by nine o'clock tomorrow, right? Sure. If we're going to have a work session anyway, can we just list that as an item just in case we have questions or something and want to discuss it at that point? Well, the workshop is not a public hearing or. No, it's not. It's but just. We but don't you well, I believe it'll have to be open to the public. Well, we can well, be open, but there's not really an agenda. It's We can discuss. You can discuss anything in a work session. It doesn't have to be delineated what you're going to talk about at the work uh, session. That would be a melody question. Okay, well. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Well, that. then let's, why don't we leave because it this she way? Ha she has to post an agenda and yeah. it has to say what the discussion topics are. Then, then why don't we post that in case, since sure. we have some information we may want to, I mean, we're not making a motion to do anything. We're just kind of further studying. So that would give us an opportunity to discuss it further if we wanted to. And I would like to also extend that invitation for that workshop to the, any of the aldermen that would want to be in that meeting to discuss these items also. And they'll be in charge of the hors d'oeuvres. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can have them. No, we can't drink them. <laughs> <laughs> so does anybody have any else on the trailer mobile home agenda that they want to be brought in front of Mr. Greville by Mr. Hamp? Tell Chris, and thank you for your time that you put into this as well. Any other questions at that? Uh, I guess that my only comment, and not trying to get out of work, sure, but I feel this PUD thing, if we do decide to revise that, is going to be a pretty large task. So I don't know if we'd want to complete that before we take on this, take on the trailer, and then take on the setbacks. <laughs> I'm concerned if we have all three going. Sure. I'm we would just set a time about our, our meeting on the 15th when we get together. Our and completion What we time. do, we do. When we don't get done, we'll come back and do yeah. it another time. That's just my only concern. If you've sure. got too many irons in the fire at once to make sure everybody's concentrating and getting things accomplished. I, I don't know that the PUD is going to be that big of a deal. I don't think that will be. I think I think we can handle them all at the same time because the first thing we have to decide is if we even want it. So right. Okay. All right. So that'll close the rest of the portion of our meeting. And turn it over to Mr. Hamp about a report from this side of the table. Uh, basically I already mentioned the Fairgrounds Villas. Right. We'll be on next month. The, um, the discussion regarding sign code, specifically, uh, there was some 
discussion regarding the window signs if we need to adjust or modify that section of code currently it only allows 20 percent coverage on windows for the businesses that definitely needs to be uh, talked about that's what i was going to bring up just now if we had with the fact there that that's definitely caused it i don't know who started that yeah. but it's created a ripple. It's created a huge, uh, you know, we've, we've got businessmen here in town that are screaming like you wouldn't believe because of this uh, ordinance that somebody dug up and it's really causing it, a problem. It's a part of existing code. City received a written complaint. My department responded and investigated it. So that's something we need to definitely jump on immediately because and the at Tuesday's Board of Aldermen meeting they put a moratorium on that specific section of code and instructed me to bring it before P and Z and back to them to see about revising it to resolve that issue. So the the Board of Aldermen is a hundred percent aware of it and they're hundred percent working towards a resolution. Good deal. I'm sure their phones were ringing off the hook after that one went through. <laughs> but I hope you understand sure. the same as I, yeah. I'm confident the aldermen understand if my department receives a specific written complaint yeah. I Get have to through. research it yeah. and if it's a violation I have to take action this the Can business has received the written complaint or is that all right well in, any other report nope anybody else have anything for the good of the group the um any news on the proposed move of the bakery yeah the last I spoke with Kurt he was still trying to work out uh, with his architect on if they could keep that building or if it'd be more uh, mm -hmm. cost-effective to Start replace it with a building <coughs> that looked the exact same he, he was wanting to keep that same style and architecture um, he did put in a written request to extend his site plan approval, which the board approved. So he has, I think it's t next November till okay. uh, he has to make a decision if he's going to move forward or not. But I don't believe it's dead in the water. I believe he's still just trying to see what's going to work best for his himself and his business. Thank you. Anybody else have anything to do the group? Entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Scott, second by Mr. Deach. All in favor say aye. 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 Thanks for coming out. Have a good week.